She held the position of the eldest daughter in her family, with her father being Admiral of the Fleet, the first Earl Mountbatten of Burma, and her mother being heiress Edwina Ashley, who traced her ancestry back to the Earls of Shaftesbury, originally ennobled in 1661. Additionally, she was the older sibling of Lady Pamela Hicks, shared a first cousin relationship with Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and served as the last surviving baptismal sponsor for King Charles III. Furthermore, she boasted a lineage that extended back to Queen Victoria as her great-great-granddaughter. Following her father's assassination in 1979, she inherited the title of Countess and a seat in the House of Lords, as her father's peerages had been established with a special provision for his daughters and their male descendants. She held this position until 1999 when the House of Lords Act 1999 led to the removal of most hereditary peers from the House. Patricia had a diverse and active life. She received education in various places, including England and New York. At 19, she joined the Women's Royal Naval Service during World War II. Later, she held roles like Deputy Lieutenant for Kent, Magistrate, and was involved in multiple service organizations. She succeeded her cousin as Colonel-in-Chief of Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry in 1974. Despite inheriting an earldom, she preferred to be addressed as Lady Patricia by the regiment. Tragically, she survived a boat explosion in 1979 that claimed the lives of her son, father, mother-in-law, and a boat boy. After the incident, she became involved with the Compassionate Friends, a group for bereaved parents. She also supported Queen Elizabeth II's meeting with a former IRA member in 2012 and unveiled a memorial in 2012 commemorating the Combined Operations Pilotage Party's work. The family collection from the estate of the late Countess Mountbatten of Burma provides a unique insight into the rich heritage of two renowned families. It encompasses a wide range of items, including jewellery, furniture, paintings, sculptures, Chinese artworks, silverware, ceramics, and art objects. The coloured diamond is said to have been acquired by Sarah Sophia Banks, an avid collector who donated over 30,000 objects to the British Museum after her death. She was influenced by her brother, the famous naturalist Sir Joseph Banks. Sarah Sophia had a close relationship with her brother and his wife Dorothea Hugesson, living with them for many years. In her will, she left her valuable possessions to her sister-in-law and brother, expressing their immense importance in her life. The diamond likely represents their intertwined initials, and the surrounding design was added later to incorporate a yellow diamond. Inspired by the vibrancy of Tutti Frutti, this design features an articulated wreath crafted from carved rubies, emeralds, and sapphires. It is embellished with collet set circular cut diamonds and sapphire beads adorned with single cut diamonds. This piece is crafted with a series of octagonal rock crystal links that are joined together by tonneau-shaped links adorned with emerald and diamond settings, creating a beautiful and intricate design. The Hennell firm has a long history, starting in 1736 as a prominent silversmith in London. 
In the late 18th century, they expanded into jewelry production. However, it was during the 1920s and 1930s, under the creative direction of designer Charles Bruno, that the company truly excelled. Their style and quality matched that of renowned international houses such as Van Cleef & Arpels, Cartier, and Bougeron. Their client list included prominent figures from high society, including the Russian royal family, British nobility, and prominent families like the Astors, Vanderbilts, and Rockefellers. This period marked the zenith of the Hennel Company's success. Adorned with cushion-shaped and rose-cut diamonds, featuring a natural pearl at the center that dangles gracefully, and a fringe that tapers in size. This diamond necklace, dating back to the 1880s, features a design resembling a garland of ivy leaves. It is adorned with cushion-shaped and rose-cut diamonds. Additionally, it has screw fittings on the reverse side, allowing it to be worn as a tiara, although the tiara frame is incomplete or missing. In the mid-20th century style, this composite piece features open-work lobes adorned with circular, single-cut, cushion, and pear-shaped diamonds, equipped with post and clip fittings. In a circular design, featuring a pierced, flowing pattern adorned with single-cut diamonds, and highlighted at the center with a brilliant cut diamond. This brooch, crafted by the L. Mountbatten, was presented to his daughter Patricia to commemorate a significant event. It showcases a skillfully employed recurring wave pattern, symbolizing his deep connection with the maritime world. An open-work geometric design, adorned with cushion-shaped, circular, single-cut, and baguette diamonds, comes with a matching component that enables the two brooches to be worn together. However, it's worth noting that seven diamonds are missing from the set. An early 20th century Cartier bracelet features two rows of cultured pearls in varying sizes, ranging from approximately 4.4 mm to 7.4 mm. 
The bracelet is secured with a circular clasp adorned with cushion-shaped diamonds. A brooch from the 1950s is fashioned as a golden piece featuring five songbirds perched on a blossoming branch. This exquisite jewellery item is adorned with both single-cut and brilliant-cut diamonds, as well as circular-cut rubies. However, it's worth noting that one small ruby is missing or incomplete. <laughs> 